Well, thank you, Luis, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, my idea here is go through uh, some previous data uh, and some that are un still unpublished, but uh, just to trigger a kind of discussion, we'll see how it works uh, on on how we uh, assess immunity and protective immunity in in in, in a target species like in, like cattle. So, uh, some time ago we have published um, this result where it describes the systemic response in, 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 a cattle, that, in cattle that have been uh, infected through the erogenous route. And as you can see, uh, there's a typical progression of uh, different isotypes uh, with the IgM at the first, and then a slowly increase of IgG1. Um, this, uh, of course, complements previous uh, information were uh, by Brian Charlson's group, where they describe that actually the, the, the immune response against infection in cattle uh, uh, follows a T independent uh, manner. So this could be accomplished without the collaboration of T cells. Uh, later on, we study also uh, the immune response in, in vaccinated cattle, and we found something very similar in terms of the progression of the uh, isotypes that we found there, uh, how the, the time course, if the, the, the scale, the time scale is a little bit different, but if, if you look carefully, you will see that it's uh, pretty simple uh, and it's similar to, to the, the one in infection. This also has a, a correlate with uh, other um, publications, of, again, from Brian's group. And in this case, uh, this publication refers that the induction of neutralizing antibodies in, in, in vaccinated cattle do require, does require the collaboration of CD4 T cells. So this is a comparison. As you can see, they are pretty similar. But what happened when you challenge these vaccinated animals? You see a completely different response than the naive because uh, mostly there are no, no really uh, big changes in, in terms of, of, of levels of, uh, of uh, uh, antibodies, probably a little bit of consumption of some of the isotypes that probably are being uh, somehow associated with the virus entering. But uh, if you compare with what happened with the naive animal, it's completely different. So this is what happened when you infect an animal that has good levels of antibodies previously to the challenge. At the same time, we found that in parallel th there was something going on at the mucosal area. Even when you vaccinate through the systemic route, you get a uh, mucosal response that, of course, later on also uh, mm, Brian's group described this as a hallmark of a T-independent response. This, uh, this um, uh, mucosal response that uh, it's uh, sporadic or uh, short uh, life. But the, the, the interesting thing here is that somehow the vaccination also promotes that after the oral nasal challenge, you will have a secondary response at the mucosal level. As you can see, you will see a burst of uh, different isotypes really fast, look at the days, one, two, three days, you, you have uh, detection of IgG1 antibody secreting cells, as well as other isotypes that are not present when you get uh, to infect a naive animal at the mucosal. So this is another piece of information. But what happens when you challenge animals that do not have really uh, protected levels of antibodies. This is a work made by the people at, in, in South Africa. And you can see that these are three groups of vaccinated cattle and the naive ones at the, bot at the bottom. Each group has seven animals and they were challenged after two vaccinations. I think it was uh, 162 days after the uh, primary vaccination. You get the infection and you get all animals protected. So this is a kind of magic because we don't have enough antibodies to uh, predict that they will be uh, protected. 
When you see what happens after the infection, you will see that the naive animals really have a slow de development of, in terms in in comparative terms, with the vaccinated. Uh, uh, um, the, oh, mommy, the other way. Okay, okay, okay. It doesn't go the way I want to. Uh, okay. Uh, it should be here. Thank you. So uh, the progression here is really fast. So in the vaccinated animals, we have uh, really fast, very high titers of neutralizing antibodies. So that could be the reason because they are protected. Another experiment, <coughs> this was made in Plum Island many years ago, and they had made two trials with animals that have been vaccinated, and then seven and four days after vaccination, they uh, uh, test if they are protected or not. As you can see, the blue line are the animals that are, uh, were challenged seven days after vaccination, and you can see that none of them uh, show symptoms of a disease. Even the ones that were vaccinated four days, at three days they show no symptoms, and at seven days some of them show, some of them they don't. And all of these animals really, they have, let's say, modest titles of antibodies. I just put as a reference the, the level of EPP 75, the expected protection level for O1 campus. That is a, this was done with Manisa, but just to have a reference. So again, we find this, this kind of, of situation when the animals face the, 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 the challenge uh, with really modest levels of, of antibodies, and still they are protected. Uh, this is from another paper, uh, recent paper we have done. It's just to give you an example of, um, this is a very limited number of animals. This is an animal vaccinated and challenged 20, six days after vaccination. The green one is challenged seven days after vaccination, and the yellow one is the naive. Uh, what happened is that both vaccinated animals and challenged, they were protected, and the naive, no. But as you can see, there are not too many differences in terms of the level of um, ELISA titers in this case. If you study what happened after the, the the challenge, you will see that the naive animals really develop a primary response. No ICC1, basically ICM response. Instead, the vaccinated and challenged at seven days, it has really a fast ICC1 response after the challenge. And this is also accompanied by this other slide uh, uh, on, the, on the right upper side of the slide. What you can see, the avidity. The brown one is the vaccinated. You can see that it has more or less the same level of uh, high avidity as before the, the, the challenge, and then later on uh, it increases. But look at the comparison between the naive and the vaccinated. The vaccinated re develops a really fast increase of, uh, of uh, uh, avidity of, of in its serum. So that could be also the reason because this animal is protected. More interestingly, if you go to the, to the mucosal area, you can also see that the vaccination and challenge at seven days also promote a rapid uh, isotype switch at the mucosal level. As you can see, this is the vaccinated, and you will see that there's a huge difference between the amount of antibody secreting cells uh, for IgG1 compared with IgM or, H or IgA. So uh, that's something that we may think. Usually, we, we don't under, we don't study what happened after the, the the challenge. So probably we are missing part of information <laughs> to understand what is happening when we found this kind of animals with low low antibody titers. This, is, this paper has been referred to, let's say, I don't know, three times already. 
but it's, it's interesting because um, in this paper, they have challenged animals that had extremely, extremely low levels of BNT. Nevertheless, many of them, they were protected. Again, that's a question, what, why? And that probably is, the, the, this BNT, low level of BNT probably is the reason because of the R1 values were kind of uh, biased or not very accurate in terms of assessing how this uh, heterologous protection will, will turn out. So, uh, going through the heterologous part, um, this is an experiment that uh, Alejandra uh, referred to. Uh, basically, it's four uh, experimental groups with uh, different vaccine protocols. And uh, they have all of them. Uh, one has a tri trivalent vaccine, one has two doses of a relatively high uh, potency uh, vaccine. Another group has a monovalent with a super high um, payload of vaccine. And then the, the first one is a monovalent with the 10 micrograms. So when we did the challenge at 30 days, we found this. Three animals were uh, showed symptoms at seven days after uh, challenge, and of course the two naive. Uh, so, if you have been here before in the previous session, you have seen these these two these these um, pictures. But in this case, we do have virus neutralizing titers and ELISA titers but we cannot discriminate between the protected and non-protected animals. Only if you see to some kind of um, qualitative aspect of antibodies, you can start seeing that. And as Alejandra showed before, that also can be done with a virus that is within the same serotype or even within a virus that is from another serotype. I do have Two other results that I, I'm not putting here, but we have found that uh, between the protected and non-protected animals, uh, the protected animals, they have a higher proportion of IgG2 cross-reactive uh, antibodies, and, and also that the, 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 um, the uh, 40 microgram vaccines, they do promote a higher ability than the 10 microgram vaccines. I, I haven't uh, included this here because I didn't want to make it forever. But the, the idea is that um, to discuss these kind of things, okay? Antibodies, we know that represent the main tool against the dispersion of, of uh, FMDV within the animal. But apparently the mechanisms behind the induction of these antibodies are different. So, because of the mechanisms are different, probably that will impact on the qual uh, qualitative aspect of these immunoglobulins and of the whole sera of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of all the monoglobulins altogether. Memory responses seem to represent a significant uh, protective mechanism for FNDV inactivated animals, but it's usually it's, it's, it's not measured. Uh, however, uh, only the induction and the presence of antibodies is considered when evaluating the ability of a vaccine or a vaccine protocol to protect against FNDV infection. So, is it true? What is what is what? The idea here is to discuss this. Are we missing something? Uh, and um, okay, what are your your uh, inputs on on on, on this? Uh, uh, ideas that I, I just wrote down here. So I will open this to the <laughs> to the public All and right. see what we got. Excellent. Okay, you did excellent you. for time. Thank you. So uh, questions. <clears throat>